Are they a force for good in our democracy? Are they behaving as we would expect them to do in our uh, democracy? Are they helping us sustain our democracy? And of course, one could argue that, you know, with parties, we have been able so far to have orderly transitions of power from one regime to the other, um, you know, over some successive period. So you could say that parties have contributed to that kind of orderly transition of power through the ballot box, and that's fine. But I think increasingly, parties are also beginning to leave a sour taste in the mouth of many Ghanaians. Mm. Why do I say that? So there are a few pieces of evidence to support that proposition. We have recently tried, there's been quite a clamor for the democratization of local government through the election of metropolitan, municipal, and district chief executives. That whole project has stalled because a strong majority of Ghanaians are opposed to the entry of political parties into our local government space. So, you know, survey after survey, you know, by CDD, by NTC, by IDEC, show that Ghanaians do not want political parties. And when you ask them, I mean, the debates that we had, including, you know, on social media around the referendum that was called off uh, in December 2019 about parties, even civil society organizations, pro-democracy civil society organizations, were, were strongly opposed mm. to the involvement of parties. Ghanaians have also not been warm to the idea of public funding for parties. Whenever it has been thrown up, there's huge opposition. And then you see that a substantial number of Ghanaian voters are so you know, uh, frustrated with the absence of checks and balances between our parliament and the executive branch that they think that the solution to that is to divide those branches between two parties. So all of these are evidences that somewhat our parties are not, have not impressed us and that we would really are having a rethink. I don't even know if today, if you had the union government referendum today, uh, how it would look like, whether Ghanaians would actually go for a no party state. And in fact, a, a strong, an emerging constituency of youth voters, young people, are beginning to entertain ideas of you know, democracy, but without parties, not just here, but in many other places. So I think this is causing me uh, as a Democrat you know, to really uh, I, you know, ask ourselves, uh, it's causing me some uh, you know, uh, apprehension, and I, I'm, I'm worried about what it is that uh, we're getting from our party. So for me, this idea of political parties um, it's, not as, it's not as though we are rejecting parties per se. And in fact, we did a, a recently a focus group, some focus group discussions across the country on this idea of why to, to really tease out why people don't want political parties, for example, in local government elections. And when you push the idea, when you push them, present different scenarios and options, what you get is, is a sense that it is not political parties per se, it is certain behaviors certain tendencies that our parties have ex exhibited and have shown themselves to exhibit. That is actually putting people off. And what are those behaviors? So tension during elections. Each time we have general elections coming up, we approach it with a lot of apprehension and anxiety. Why? Because it has become almost the equivalent of war. For, especially for our two main rival parties. Election violence and political party vigilantism, a term that we didn't you know, have you know, our, in our democratic nomenclature, but for parties. You know, a, a lot of you know, apprehension about election violence and vigilantism, 